Ah, how you doing? It's Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. Wiping out corruption. Ticket quote is racism, discrimination. Uh, so today, as you could see, I'm shooting in black and white. Why? Because it's a black and white issue, right? Said so yesterday I want to try to start to sew together the um, casual connection between how discrimination and racism and the and uh, racial politics are used in city agencies, in in particular the Department of Sanitation. How these um, this identity politics is used to uh, keep corruption in place. So, so here we go. I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I was reading the the, the new you know fake news CNN. <laughs> Right and the, the the Clinton you know Clinton News Network right and and what do they do here we go so so Trump right Trump's on a va he go takes a trip it's not a vacation he's taking a trip over to China he's shaking hands with with all the big wigs the democratically elected president of the United States of America right is over there doing business on behalf of the people and there were three um, you know the story everybody saw it the three UCLA basketball players. Thought it would be funny to shoplift from Louis Vuitton and steal a pair of shades, thinking they're in downtown L.A. Right, so it wasn't funny. They were looking at ten years in jail. All right, and Trump gets him out of it. Trump, Trump flies over there. Right, he's doing business. Probably, obviously, it's not his main focus, but he goes over. Excuse me a second. <laughs> Right, he goes over there, and in his travels, he he speaks to the president of of um, China, and he, he he you know off the record negotiates the release of the three kids that shoplifted in China, and pow, he's free. So what does he do? He you know Trump, Mister Ego, he says, "You think the three UCLA basketball players will say thank you, President Trump?" They were heading for 10 years in jail. So CNN, here we go with the race baiting, right? This has a lot. I'm going to tie it into to, to the to the agency in a second. But but this is important to look at, right? This is how CNN reported it, right? I'm not even going to give the guy credit, right? Right at, right after Trump, right after they were released, right? Right after the three kids were released from China, the 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 commissioner Larry Scott of the Pac-12, the conference where UCLA is. Um, that team is in issued a thank you, but Trump said, you know, do you think that the, the the three players would would offer a thank you, right? Okay, because of course they've painted Trump as some sort of racist, that some sort of he's he's not for he's not for all the people, he's only for some of the people, right? So th that okay, so this is CNN reporting that the three players are all young black men should not should also not be lost here. Trump's history of racial issues, both as president and as a private citizen, shows some level of intentionality when it comes to using racially coded language and taking advantage of racial animosity and stereotypes for his own political gain. This is CNN. This is, this is CNN saying this shit, right? The image of an older white man in a position of power demanding thanks from three young black men for saving them will set off a lot of alarm bells for people. And understandably so, given Trump's previous actions in the wake of the white supremacist violence in Charlotte, Virginia, and in the ongoing NFL anthem protests, right? Okay, so this is this is this is race baiting. This is fake news, right? First of all, there's so many there's so many you know miscalculations there that that Trump had something to do with the white supremacist violence in, in Charlotte. It's, that, that, that's, that's, that's conjecture, that the, right? Or the NFL protest by the, the initial guy, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, Kirkpatrick, 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 whatever his name is, right? That guy that kneels for the national anthem, right? Now, if you roll that tape back, that guy's a hero because he was not, he wasn't just protesting Trump. He was protesting Clinton, right? He said it. He said, "What's Trump with all this this racially charged shit? You know, bashing Mexicans, right?" And he's right to say that. It's a free country. You're allowed to say it, right? And 
and and um, and then he he pivoted. He said, well, "What about all these emails? What about all this this democratic scandal going on?" Right, right. All of the, that. So it was twofold. He didn't. It wasn't racially. The the kid kneeling before the national anthem has a right to do it. He's if, if they fire him or whatever the hell, whatever heat he takes, he's a, he's a, he has the, the the right to do that. Right, but but here CNN supposed to be, you know. News, right? This is this is this is race baiting. This is this is programming, you know, reaching out to the most radically sensitive individuals and pushing those buttons, pushing those buttons, right? So that everything that the president does is racially motivated. It's it's us against them. Why? Because CNN has has donors. CNN needs to keep. They need to keep a the poverty draft. They need to keep. You know, they need to keep these agencies in place, right? Keep the money machine going. It's the donors. It's not the people. They answer to the donors, right? So, but anyway, so, so how does that, how does that, so that, so that's how it's, that's how the, the political thing sets it up. That's how the news sets it up. So in my case, right, case of DSNY, right? Okay. Again, I'm, I'm an old, older, I'm an older (laughs) male, white male, Sitting in a classroom, the the entire class is mostly under thirty, African American people of color, Hispanic, right? There's a couple of white guys in there, but they were two two or three of them were young. It was like whatever. But the the point is that the the, the majority of the class is 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 uh is the is the target of an article like this, right? It could, because of race, they they. They're baiting you. They're playing you, right? And then the, the three instructors are are are, are the, the, the 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 most radically sensitive individuals that you could ever put in one room. There's there's Greenwood, you know, probably a 65, 70 year old African American man from Trinidad, and you go. I was invited into his office one day. He's got. It's like the. It's like <laughs> remember the scene in. Um, I don't know, there was a movie where where there's all those white people on the on the wall, right? Do the right thing. All the white people are on the on the uh, on the wall, and the black guy walks in. So why was so? How come there's no? Why why all the white people? How come there's no black people? So I walk into Greenwood's office, and there's it's it's like a, a who's who of of Black America, right? Black Black History, right? Obama and right. And I love Obama. I voted for Obama. But the point is that. That he's he was the he was the ringleader in this, and then you have you have Pascal who was clearly emotionally and f- mentally unstable. Like you know, the least little thing could could would would tick her off. And someone like me who actually asks asked legitimate questions, right? Her response is is that of 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 exactly how this article des- described it. The image of an older white man, and you know, I wasn't in any position of power, but maybe that's what they feared, you know, that somehow I would take their job, All right? So, also in the class, I want to talk about July, July, uh, two thousand fourteen, right? Was the Eric Garner case where a white NYPD um, officer caused the chokehold death of a black, the black guy, black father of seven, the guy in Staten Island, the Lucy salesman. And then the subsequent December 3rd, 2014, grand jury decision not to indict Pantelio. That was the, the white NYPD cop. Now, the NYPD cop that choked the guy is Italian-American descent. He's from Staten Island. Guess what? I'm, I'm, my grandparents are Staten uh, I grew up, I spent my teenage years in Staten Island. And my grandparents and and parents were all they're all Italian descent, all the way back to the to the Stone Age, right? So, to Pascal, right? Here I was. I was. I forget about what I'm going to say. Forget about forget about anything. It's it's identity politics. I am. In 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 her eyes, I am the white cop that killed the black guy, right? Now, right. Now we all watched the video. We all saw it. It's, it was it, it was disgusting policing, right? Two two cops. They did everything right up until choking the guy, right? They waited for the supervisor to come to give the word to arrest the guy, right? F- 
for whatever reason, the police have used discretion and made the decision to arrest you. And if you resist arrest in New York City, you know what's coming next, right? It's not, there's no mystery there. He knew what was coming, right? He's not a stupid person, right? If you resist arrest in New York and the police say you're under arrest, put your hands behind your back. If you if you resist, that's what they do to you. They tackle you, they handcuff you, and they throw you, they stuff you in a car and take you away, right? That's what they do, right? And you know it's coming. It doesn't matter if they're white, black, Chinese. It doesn't matter. They're the police. <laughs> so, but but in the in the in that in the class, of course. If you were to say what I just said, right? If I, if you were to make that argument as a white male, over, you know, over fifty, an older white male, then then you're a racist. You're 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 projecting your white privilege on on us blacks, right? Radically sensitive people, right? And that that's the, that was the the beginning. That's when I started to go really quiet. I said, "Wow, these people are really unstable. They don't they don't they don't." They don't know anything, right? <laughs> they're dangerous, you know. They're, they're dangerous. I don't want to get in the way of this, right? So, but anyway, that, that that's all I want to say is that when you see this, you know, that's how it that's how it ties in. So you have all these very very st- why if you want to keep if you want to keep a a, a a a fraudulent business like a ticket quota in place these are the people you advance you don't advance people like me who have an opinion or, or some of the, young, the the smarter young people in that class you don't advance them to positions of importance you pick idiots like these like radically the, the second you say something boom they fly off the handle like whoa what are you crazy well you know look he's a you know he's a racist right that's not I Garnett he did Garnett was the there was three three supervisors there's there was there was Greenwood and under him was Pascal the most radically sensitive of all of them the one who falsified my performance evaluation the one who instructed Amiskita to 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 write me up into attack right she's the one causing this whole mess what do they do they 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 her behavior, they they give her a promotion. They make her captain. That's what they do, right? Because she's the most radically disturbed, sensitive individual in the room. So you make her the king. You make her the the. You put her in charge. The people like me, who 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 actually make sense, who actually offer offer actual policies and ideas to improve or to improve the you know the the the, the functionality of the of the organization or to actually uh, uh, make it a green job and, and reach out to the community and keep the community clean, you, they throw you under the bus. They don't want to hear anything from you, right? So so in, in one respect, it's someone who speaks out. Yes, many of you have said that to me. When I asked you, was I treated differently? And they almost unanimously, the people that I've spoke to in that class have said that. Of course, they were they were targeting you. They were treating you like like you know trying to shut you the hell up because you would ask questions, right? But but the, that and that's true. Okay, so that and that carried over into the field. And Pascal did everything she could in her power to to make sure that the knife got stuck in my back and that I would I would get thrown out the door. And she succeeded at doing that. But she also succeeded at dragging the whole agency down she did it okay i didn't do it she did it right she she started you know and i told your eeo lady i said please no you know uh, i'm a formidable enemy i'm not gonna i'm not gonna just roll over uh, but anyway so that so that's um that's all i wanted to say about that so it is uh, it is a black and white issue and um and 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 though although there is the the element uh, although there is the whistleblower element where Conti spoke up and 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 notified the authorities. This I wanted. I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate how it's done. How did Burke and Klingler and 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 and, and the, the older guy do, Flaherty, the old commissioner. How did they get away with this for 30 years? How did they pull it off? This is how you do it. You put the most radically sensitive people in, in positions of power, and that anything that comes up the ranks that that defies it, what they call uh, um, challenging the the the, the cha- you know you, you challenge the operation. No, you, you're not challenging the operation. You're calling out criminal activity, right? Cr- you know, 
you caught you you know attacking the, the community with an illegal quote so that's how they do it and and there I gave you the example that was the first three months all of the people that I'm talking about Greenwood Pascal and to some degree Garnett all had the same mannerisms as the the example Miss Kerr who was attacking um, uh, Agent Hazel, very, very, very aggressive, very one-sided, very pounding, pounding their opinion down your throat, right? And in my case, it was, it was in a, in a racially charged way. So, have a good day.